months ago I decided to do something entirely crazy and go travel the world in six different countries while coding our app Boxio. So in this video I want to take you through a very realistic day in my life living this kind of life, this time in Singapore. At the end I will also tell you how absolutely anyone can do this even if you're still a beginner. So on all of my work days, which is all days, I divide my day into three parts. The morning block, the afternoon block and the night block. The morning block runs from roughly 9am to 1pm and it is characterized by morning coffee, trying to remember what the hell I was thinking with my code when I stopped work the previous day and usually we have our morning stand-up call at 9am my time here in Dubai but since Singapore is four hours ahead of Dubai. This day our morning meeting was really at 1 p.m. of my time. So I had all my morning block to basically get work done uninterrupted. I think this time I was fixing some stupid authentication logic and all sorts of other dumb configuration stuff that never ever works properly. At this point I realized that the WeWork I was in had much cooler view from the top floor so I decided to put the $40 I paid to enter here to good use and go to the top to procrastinate by taking some shots from the window. Don't tell my co-founders that I did that during my coding hours. By the way, the app we have built is now officially live. It's called Boxio and it allows you to manage everything you do on your computer by organizing your tabs, files and apps into these boxes that you can open and close with one click. The aim of the app is that you no longer have to get distracted because your computer is cluttered with a million things open all at the same time. You can create a box for every project or task you're working on and whenever you want to work on something, you can just open the box and the environment you want to use for that project will automatically open in front of you. The app is completely free to download so if you're interested, go down below and download it from the first link in the description. Okay, time for the midday block, which is characterized by lunch, more coffee, and a midday slump, which I then consequently try to fix with even more coffee. So at 1 p.m. we do our morning stand-up, which again is more like a midday stand-up. Anyway, we need we align and update each other on where we are from the previous day's work and decide on the goals for each of us for the day. After the meeting, I take my lunch break to go into this nice little brunch spot close to my WeWork. After my lunch, surprise, surprise, Singapore decides to start pouring on me like crazy. So I do my best to not break my laptop inside my bag and lose all my code. After that, it's time to get back to work and keep working on my damn stupid authentication issues. While I'm at the WeWork, I even bump into an angel investor who gets interested in our app. Usually when I'm at home, I don't really go to co-working spaces at all. But it's the chance encounters like these that remind me that maybe I should do it even more often, even when I'm not traveling. Okay, time for the last part of the day, which is my night vlog. So around 6 p.m. is dinner time and I go and explore one of Singapore's famous hawker centers for some absolutely sick street food. After dinner, I go for a little walk and this is truly why I enjoy this lifestyle. I could just as well do this from my home, but why not live my normal life like coding away, making videos, except in new different places. So you get to just live this much richer life rather than just doing the same walk around the same block that you're used to your entire life. Now here's the one problem with this. It's really, really easy to, when you're in a different location, fall off your routine because you just keep being on some 24 seven vacation like a degenerate. Don't do that. So that's what the one thing I do to keep working on my goals at the same time as doing this awesome traveling is I make sure I keep my normal routine as much as possible. Sure, there's gonna be some more time where I end up taking an extra hour to walk around and do something rather than working, but I think that's worth it. But like for the most part, I do the same working hours, the same kind of routine wherever I am in the world. And sure, it can be tough getting into this routine. You're getting used to the place, you're finding a new gym, your new favorite food place or whatever. And that's why I actually don't recommend doing the normal digital nomading life where you're in like one place for two weeks and then in another place for like three weeks. I do recommend being in any given place for like at least a month, which I didn't follow here because I was only in Singapore for like two weeks. Anyway, because that way you can minimize the amount of times where you're sort of getting into your routine and maximize the time in routine while still exploring new places. So at night we have a meeting with a business advisor, which I have while drinking a beer at this super cool place by the river. 
And after that, I go for a night stroll around some of the famous touristy places in Singapore, like these gardens by the bay and this absolutely sick light show close to the hotel. Normally at this time, I also go to the gym, although this is the part that I do sometimes forget while living in a different location. And I know right now you're going to be saying, Oh, it's nice for you to say you've got your freaking YouTube channel that's making you a bunch of money. Of course, you can do this. And like, sure, of course, you need some money to like buy the flights and stuff like that. But I actually think like, if you have just some savings, it's worth it to just take a year and go and travel to a cheaper location. Like sure, Singapore is a super expensive place. Like if you don't have money, don't go to Singapore. But like actually, if you just choose your location wisely, spending a year traveling or just living in a new place is probably going to be much, much cheaper than just staying in your home city if you're from the West. So like actually nowadays, like for a lot of people who are learning to code, if you have the balls to do this, I would actually just recommend literally quitting everything you're doing and just take a year, go living in a cheaper location and learn to code and build some sort of a project or an app while you're doing it. Like it's an awesome experience that you're never going to forget in your life. And at the same time, you can make amazing progress towards your goals. Because the one thing with coding is that all you need is your laptop. So anyway, this was a bit of a different video to what I usually talk about on this channel, but I just wanted to get this off my chest because it's been such an amazing experience. And it's just something that most people just wouldn't even consider. So let me know down in the comments if I'm a complete dumbass for doing this, or if this perhaps resonates with you. And the thing is, after that one year of you learning the code and building some sort of an app while traveling, what's most likely going to happen is at the end of it, you're either worst case going to be able to go back to your home country and get a job, or you could just become a remote developer directly. Because these days, there's actually three different ways for you to live this kind of life indefinitely as a software developer while working remotely. And no, you don't even have to become like a startup founder to do that. And if that's something that interests you, I made this video right here where I tell you exactly how to do this step by step from zero, including the three different ways to do this and exactly how to achieve this, even if you're a complete beginner.